This video is just going to provide a brief introduction to the different types of complex distillation columns that we can have. Complex distillation columns are sometimes referred to as thermally coupled distillation columns because streams pass between two of the columns without there being a reboiler or a condenser between them. The columns are then linked by these two directional flows, thus allowing us to have actually removed the condenser or reboiler from one of the columns. So we're saving energy by not having to do that extra energy transfer in our sequence. The side strip column is a thermally coupled rearrangement of an indirect sequence. So in this case, what we can do is actually remove the condenser from the top of the column, take a liquid from the second column and the vapour from the first column to put into the second column. This then allows us to shift section 3 of our second column to the top of our first column, leaving just the bottom half of the second column by itself. What we've done is removed the condenser from one of the columns, thus reducing the energy requirements needed for that column because we have one less condenser. The side rectifier column is actually a rearrangement of the direct sequence. So in this case, what we can do is remove the reboiler from the bottom of our first column and take our vapour from the second column and put that into the first column and our liquid from the first column into the second column. This then allows us to move section 4 of our second column over to the bottom of our first column. What we've done here is actually removed one of the reboilers from our two column arrangement to our side rectifier arrangement. Therefore, we're saving energy and costs because we only have one reboiler in our sequence. If either the most volatile or the least volatile component is only a minor fraction of our feed, then instead of having to have a side column, what we can do is just take a side stream off our column. But if A, our most volatile component, is our minor component, then what we can have is a side stream towards the top of the column to take off our second most volatile component, in this case B. And because A is more volatile, we take it off as a liquid, because A remains mainly as the vapour at that stage. If our least volatile component, C, is our minor component, we can actually take a side stream off of our next least volatile component below our feed, in this case B. And what we would do is we take that side stream off as a vapour because C, our least volatile component, would mainly be a liquid at that stage. If we have to separate multiple components, sometimes we we'll have a distillation column and what our first distillation column can do is do a partial separation of our components. In this case, our component A towards the top of the column and our component C towards the bottom of the column, but then our component B will be split between our top and bottom compositions. These feeds are then both fed to a second distillation column where we further split our components A and C and we can also separate our component B in a side stream. We can make this more energy efficient by removing the partial condenser from the top of our column and running a liquid from our second column back into our first column and also removing the partial reboiler from our first column and running a vapour from the second column back into our first column. Then we can actually slide this first column across and put that into our second distillation column and just have the separation divided by a dividing wall between the columns. 